almost a quarter of people with bipolar disorder will experience chronic pain, and I'm one of them. I had no idea it was so prevalent in our community. It's hard enough to deal with the ups and downs of bipolar disorder without the addition of chronic pain. But unfortunately, many of us experience both. Bipolar disorder and chronic pain appear to have a very interactive relationship where one affects the other. I resonate with that very much. Most of my injuries came from doing too much when I was manic. I used to run a successful chain of karate schools. I would push myself physically beyond my limits, especially when symptomatic. Then when the depression kicked in, I would do the opposite. I'd stop moving altogether. Both extremes contributed to my physical ailments. That's just me though. Maybe you've had a bad car accident or have something like fibromyalgia. Regardless of the cause of your pain, I truly empathize with you. It goes without saying that those of us with bipolar disorder experience more depression and anxiety than people without the illness. Physical pain is absolutely a symptom of anxiety and depression. Did you know that muscle aches, tension headaches, migraines, chest pain, and gastrointestinal cramping, among other things, can coincide with bipolar disorder? Depression alone has been linked to greater pain sensitivity, making it all harder to cope with. In fact, those of us with both chronic pain and bipolar have a harder time recovering from bipolar episodes as our ability to function is diminished. My biggest concern, though, is that we are at a greater risk of suicide. Physical pain plus emotional pain can be overwhelming. Astonishingly, one in five of us do not survive this illness. One in five. The silver lining is that more people are seeking help than ever before. People are realizing that it isn't all in their head and that symptoms can be alleviated. There really is hope for us. Moving on, I mentioned fibromyalgia a minute ago. Only around 3% of the population has this type of musculoskeletal pain. However, for those of us who have concurrent bipolar disorder, the percentage jumps up to around 20%. Treating fibromyalgia is complicated because the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRI drugs that are used to treat it can induce mania in a lot of us. Cymbalta is just one example of an SSRI. Please note that I am not a medical professional, so when I talk about specific meds on this channel, it's just an example and not a recommendation. Something else I found interesting was the relationship between bipolar disorder and osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. Arthritis causes severe swelling, stiffness, and sometimes bone loss or spurs. The pain can be substantial. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease occurring in about 1% of the population. Osteoarthritis occurs in about 15 to 30% of people, depending on age. Here's the kicker. Those of us with bipolar disorder are twice as likely to develop rheumatoid arthritis and three times more likely to develop osteoarthritis than the general population. Researchers theorize that the inflammation associated with arthritis can worsen bipolar symptoms. Inflammation can increase serotonin and dopamine production, which in turn can trigger a bipolar episode. Migraines are also associated with bipolar disorder. These are severe headaches that impact around 16% of the general population and around 25% of people with bipolar disorder. They cause pain, dizziness, nausea, visual changes, and can dramatically increase symptoms like anxiety or depression. Certain meds like Depakote, for example, have shown success in treating both migraines and bipolar concurrently. And again, that's just an example and not a recommendation. There are a few theories as to why those of us with bipolar experience more chronic pain. One of them has to do with a link between pain, bipolar, and the prefrontal cortex of our brain. In people who experience chronic pain, the prefrontal cortex appears shrunken in some patients. In bipolar disorder, the prefrontal cortex can also appear shrunken, especially when left untreated. 
Other things to consider. Mania is literally a painkiller for many of us. When I'm experiencing euphoric hypomania, I simply feel less pain. It makes it super easy to overdo it. it. Makes it even easier to chase that manic feeling via substances or high adrenaline activities. If we feel more pain when we're depressed, many of us will try to avoid depression at all costs. Chasing mania has its own set of problems, though, because what goes up will eventually come crashing down. The higher we go up, the farther we have to fall back down. This equates to greater physical pain. Treating bipolar disorder and chronic pain is complicated, to say the least. Since we often respond poorly to treatment, it requires a multidisciplinary approach in order to adequately treat both. This can include seeing a pain management specialist, a therapist, and/or a psychiatrist at the same time. A big problem in the bipolar community is the abuse of opiate pain meds. They literally almost killed me. People with bipolar have higher pain rates and therefore are more likely to receive prescriptions for opioids. We also have substantially higher rates of substance abuse. These meds can contribute to both mania and depression. They flood the brain's reward pathways with up to 10 times more dopamine than what's released on a regular basis. I was about 27 when I injured my back at the gym. The general practitioner I saw ended up prescribing me a bunch of opiates. They made me manic, which eventually led to a psychiatric hospitalization. Detoxing off of those meds was one of the worst things I've lived through. All that said, be extra careful when it comes to pain management. Make sure your medical team knows about the bipolar disorder. Another treatment for pain that we have to be careful with is steroid injections. It's common practice for doctors to treat arthritic pain, sciatica, lupus, and other ailments with steroids. These can cause major mood swings and even psychosis. They personally make me manic and agitated followed by a substantial crash. Considering all of the complications with treating bipolar and chronic pain, err on the side of treating the bipolar first. Simply put, the fewer bipolar episodes, the less pain we experience. For me, I have greater influence over my bipolar symptoms than my pain symptoms. Notice how I said influence and not control. By aggressively treating the bipolar first, I've managed to reduce my episode-related pains quite a bit. Part of treating my bipolar first is protecting my sleep like it's a precious treasure. I know everyone's different, but my pain is usually more intense in the evenings when I lay down to go to sleep. That said, it can impact my ability to fall or stay asleep. Less sleep can equate to more pain, and both of those intensify my bipolar symptoms. It's a nasty cycle, and it's hard to break. See what your doctor has to say. I take specific meds for sleep with an anti-inflammatory, and it makes a big difference. The available meds that are suitable for treating both pain and bipolar are far and few between. One that shows promise is the drug gabapentin. In some cases, it can help treat neuropathic pain without exacerbating the bipolar. Again, the drug is just an example and not a recommendation. Neuropathic pain is what they call the pain associated with bipolar disorder. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know I'm a big fan of CBT, or cognitive behavioral therapy. CBT can help increase our tolerance to pain, which is amazing. It helps us challenge negative thoughts related to the pain and increases pleasurable, goal-directed activities as a way to improve our quality of life. It's probably one of the best overall forms of therapy for those of us living with bipolar disorder. In closing, we have to be so careful with what we introduce into our bodies. Educate and advocate for yourself. Many doctors just don't have the experience or knowledge to know which drugs interact negatively with bipolar disorder. It's my hope that more medical professionals start screening for chronic pain when someone has bipolar disorder. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments if you experience chronic pain and what the cause of it is. 
Better yet, let me know what helps you reduce the pain without impacting your bipolar symptoms. Let's come together as a community and help each other live a higher quality of life. Thank you so much, as always, for spending this time with me. If you'd like to connect with me by phone or send me a direct message, there's a link in the video description where I can be reached. Take extra good care of yourselves and I'll be back here soon with more Polar Warrior videos. Stay well.